Well, for more on China's most important political season, I'm joined by Haiyan Wang, managing partner at the China India Institute. Welcome back to the show. Glad to be here. So, break down for our global audience. Why are this year's two sessions so significant? It is very significant politically, institutional-wise. Also, unlike any other uh, sessions in the past, because this starts the new five-year term for the state leadership for the state council cabinet leadership, for the leadership in the legal uh, arena in terms of su Supreme Court leaders. And then also, very significant, you know, these sessions will have the passage of the amendment of, to the institutions. In terms of uh, taking out from the current institution the two-term limit for the presidency and vice presidency. This is a major political change that will have a long lasting effect that has been hotly debated uh, you know, overseas for sure, and I'm sure you know, uh, various opinions voiced about this political change. And also, um, this uh, constitutional amendment also includes incorporating Xi Jinping's thought on um, socialism with Chinese characteristics for the new era into the institution. So these, uh, this uh, year's sessions, the significance of it, uh, we will see it for a long term to come. And we certainly saw a lot of economic priorities highlighted. Yes. Let's start with developing the real economy. What have we seen so far in terms of action and how can we expect this issue to be addressed? I think that when it comes to the economic side, deepening reform, maybe taking on some of the tougher issues, such as the state-owned enterprise uh, reform that has had a lot of resistance in the past. Let's see if that could, that could uh, make uh, some uh, progress in the coming five years term uh, in terms of controlling the uh, very rapid rise of debt, controlling the systemic risk without slowing down economic growth too much. Uh, sustainability, a shift to a more green growth and uh, addressing the, the inequality issue. Because based on the Gini coefficient, China's inequality is already above the warning level set by the United Nations. So how do we address inequality uh, you know, while maintaining a stable growth is uh, are some of the top issues. And all of these, um, of course, uh, are to be addressed under the solid uh, leadership uh, under President Xi's uh, you know, uh, leadership. And we also saw that there was a focus on improving the mechanisms for the well-being of everyday Chinese. Mm. What sort of uh, programs could we be looking at or policies regarding that? I think that the number one is uh, precise uh, uh, poverty alleviation. I think that there will be some uh, you know, dedicated programs allocating funds to the poor of the poorest areas, one. Two, I think that in terms of uh, building affordable housing in the urban areas, and uh, housing has become too unbearable for a lot of the working class, that has to be addressed. And I think that uh, how do we reform the hukou system to give the uh, migrants in the cities the same welfare benefits and the benefits uh, for accessing education and health care and so that they can free up their consumption power. That is uh, also uh, another key issue. So, and, and I think that also something that the government is paying a lot of attention is to addressing the unbalanced development between the coastal areas, the urban areas versus the inland versus, you know, urban versus the rural areas. I think more of the infrastructure building right. it needs to be shifted more towards the inland provinces. Actually, we are already seeing that. We're seeing coastal areas uh, developing more of the service sector, technological sectors, right. and then the manufacturing sectors, more labor intensive, more capital intensive projects get shifted to inland. And a Belt and Road projects actually also help the inland provinces. I think these will address some of the, that imbalance and inequality issues in China. Now let's also talk about some of the risks. We know they talked about guarding against risks, whether yeah. it's in the financial sector or mm -hmm. otherwise. What would you say are the main risks facing the Chinese economy, and how has the country addressed them so far? I think it's still one of the major risks is the rapid rise of the debt. Uh, in terms of the total debt to GDP ratio, it was only at 255% of the GDP, and that was actually on par with the advanced countries, not to that significant. But what worries uh, the market, what worries the economists and the government 
uh, government leaders are really the pace of that rise since the financial crisis has gone up way too fast. It's very complex because there are layers, layers of lendings by various, you know, shadow banking uh, agencies that just needs to be peeled, peeled back layer by layer. And um, also, so much of that debt is picked up by the corporate sectors. Right. And then as we, as the economy is slowing down, as we try to reduce the overcapacity in the economy, and try to ensure some of the employment targets faced by the state-owned enterprises, how at the same time, we could reduce the debt, that is a, a major challenge. I see that as the number one potential systemic risk factor. Certainly a tough balancing act. Thank you as yeah. always. Hi, Anwang there from the China India Institute.